Welcome to Episode 1 of Tech and Travel Q&A, Preventing Boilover on Liquid-Cooled Motorcycle Engines. This is a response to a comment at why I chose a Honda XR650R motorcycle for a dual sport conversion. The question, did you install a radiator fan or anything for additional cooling? Using an XR650R on the street, I have issues with keeping the bike temps down at stoplights, as one example. I know Trailtech sells a radiator fan kit. However, I'm not sure how to verify that I have a properly upgraded stator or if there are other less expensive and simpler options to install for street use. Here's my answer at the channel comments. I've not added a fan yet, and some of my single track has been at crawl pace for considerable distances. I consciously keep the bike moving and do not park and idle. Learned habits from years of air-cooled bikes. In your case, you can't avoid idling and stop-and-go traffic. I run Honda's premixed coolant with a stock thermostat and radiator cap. Test your thermostat's opening temperature and the radiator cap's release pressure. Some do change to a lower temp thermostat, which can allow the engine to operate at a cooler set point. I'd stick with the stock cap pressure to prevent overpressurizing the radiator cores and hoses. My fuel mixtures are never on the lean side. Slightly rich will effectively cool the upper cylinder. Too rich can foul the spark plug or even fuel wash the cylinder, which is highly undesirable and can damage the rings and cylinder wall. To compensate for a slightly rich mix, I run a Polestar spark plug that can fire through this mix. If you do need a cooling fan, the stator's output can be tested whether stock, upgraded, or rewound. So let's expand on this topic. For the longest time, liquid cooling on a motorcycle was a novelty. The earliest mass production bikes with liquid cooling were Suzuki's GT750 and the first Goldwing 1000 in the early to mid 70s. A major advantage of liquid cooling is closer engine tolerances due to less cylinder and piston expansion and distortion. Cylinder heads, valves, cylinders, and pistons tend to last longer with liquid cooling. For motorcycles, a popular alternative has been oil-to-air cooling, which was also proven by Porsche for many years. And in many applications of motorcycles, air cooling worked fine. My Honda XR350R and XR500R each have air cooling. Here, the XR350 shows at 9.5 to 1 compression ratio on a pre-emissions era jetting does not cause the engine to wear out quicker. This is a 1984 engine and is still running strong. Notice the cooling fins. Note that the exhaust valves are on the front side of the engine and the exhaust pipes are also coming out the front of the engine. Air cooling when the motorcycle is moving is adequate for cooling the pipes and the exhaust valve side of the cylinder head. This engine has plenty of compression. It still burns no oil and has served well in my hands since the mid-1990s. The top end has never been a part on my watch. Honda's 2000 to 2007 model XR650R is the only liquid-cooled Honda XR series motorcycle. It features a pair of radiators and liquid cooling system. There is a water pump, cylinder and cylinder head cooling jackets, and cooling ports. To keep cylinder temperatures normal, there are twin radiators with fins, top tanks, inlets, outlets, and a filler neck cap. I use Honda's pre-mixed, formulated for aluminum, coolant antifreeze. Formulations for aluminum engines are different than those for cast iron engines. Honda HP Coolant is a pre-mixed 50-50 formulation specifically for motorcycle engines. This pre-mixed formulation is good for minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit to 265 degrees boiling point with a proper pressure cap. This is all the protection you need. Too much antifreeze will not have enough expansion rate and boils over. Too little and there's not protection against freezing or a high boiling point. 
Never run pure antifreeze. Always mix the antifreeze with pure distilled non-mineralized water or buy a pre-mixed version like HP coolant. The condition of the radiator cap is important. The radiator cap pressure raises the boiling point. In addition to that, the radiator cap seals the cooling system, yet also allows for boil over into the recovery tank. Once the system is sealed, the coolant fill or recovery tank has two marks. The low mark is where the coolant level should be after the engine cools. The high mark is where the engine coolant level should be when the engine is stopped after a long run. As the radiators and engine cools, that cooling causes the coolant to contract. This creates a negative pressure and siphons the coolant back into the radiators. This drops the coolant to the low level in the recovery tank. The thermostat brings the engine and coolant to a normal preset operating temperature. When the motorcycle is going down the road or trail, it should maintain that set point. Coming to a stop or idling, it may heat up beyond that point. The thermostat closes to heat the coolant and opens to circulate coolant antifreeze through the radiators and cool the engine. There is often a small bypass valve in the thermostat to prevent excessive pressure, back pressure, or damage to hoses and gaskets during a closed thermostat warm-up. The water pump runs continuously. A thermostat is essential in cold weather. Once the thermostat opens, the temperature is more or less regulated by the engine's operating temperature and the efficiency of the radiators, water pump, and circulation of air. Ambient air flows through the radiator cores and cools the radiator. The dissipation of heat from the radiator tubes and fins is what cools the coolant. The coolant overflow tank is more than just a catch can. This allows the system to be sealed and keeps coolant antifreeze from pouring on the ground. When coolant antifreeze mix expands in the cooling system or heat causes a boil over, the excess coolant antifreeze flows into this recovery tank. Again, as the engine and cooling system cool normally, the coolant antifreeze mix contracts. This contraction creates a negative pressure or vacuum state, causing coolant antifreeze to siphon back into the radiators. Aeration creates gaps in the coolant. Visible leaks should be repaired. For automotive engines and some motorcycle applications, this vacuum purge and fill tool can eliminate the air gaps in the coolant. I use this tool to change or fill coolant on both automotive and diesel light truck engines. I limit the vacuum draw to a safe level to protect the hoses and gaskets. Hoses actually collapse during this process. Normal burp purging is usually adequate and safe on motorcycle cooling systems. The thermostat set point is crucial. This can be tested with an infrared laser thermometer gun. Check the temperature with the infrared gun at each side of the thermostat housing. Always make sure that the cores are clean, not clogged, and that the fins are not bent. Check the radiator outlet and inlet hose temperatures. There should be a drop in temperature between the inlet and outlet from the radiator. The radiator core or cores and tanks must be in top condition. You can check the radiator cores and tanks with the infrared laser thermometer gun. If you pressure clean the tanks with a pressure washer, use a moderate pressure and always clean the tanks from the back side of the radiator. Drive mud, dirt, or debris out the front of the radiator core. Testing with an infrared laser thermometer all around the tube's tank and fins, you can check to be certain that the flow is uniform with no clogs or restrictions. You're watching for hot spots and isolated cool areas that represent clogged tubes. Restrictions or clogging will reduce the radiator flow rate the volume of coolant going through the radiator and limit the dissipation of heat from the coolant. Minor fin damage can be corrected with a fin comb. Be very careful and do not damage the fins or tubes when performing this chore. The cooling system can be pressure tested for seam and tube leaks, hose seepage, internal seepage, or bleed off of coolant within the system. Inspect for signs of worn radiator tubes or missing fins. Importantly, if you see bubbles in the cooling system with the engine running, be suspicious that the head gasket might be seeping and compression gases are leaking into the cooling jackets. 
If excessive pressure is coming from the cylinder and into the cooling system, coolant will be forced into the coolant recovery tank and boil out of the recovery tank. If the recovery tank is filling up when the engine is below operating temperature, this is a sign that the head gasket is blown. Cylinder pressures are boosting the pressure to dramatic levels within the cooling system. If you do suspect a blown head gasket or want a test to be certain you do not have a blown head gasket, use a cylinder leak down test and see if pressure is coming through the cooling system. A leak down test producing bubbles in the radiator or coolant recovery tank is an indication that cylinder pressure is going into the cooling jackets by way of a blown head gasket, cracked head, or damaged cylinder. Excessive engine overheating with an aluminum cylinder head can also cause cracking around the exhaust valve seat. This is a common source of cylinder head cracking into a cooling jacket in the head on liquid cooled aluminum head engines. Severe overheating can also warp a cylinder head or cylinder deck causing the head gasket to seep. Test the engine cylinder and cylinder head temperatures with the infrared laser thermometer gun. Check the cylinder jacket for uniform temperatures. Temperatures are hottest near the top and combustion chamber. Check the cylinder head temperature. The combustion area is maximum heat. Check the water pump area temperature. Engine cooling is not just from coolant and the cooling system. Critical parts in all automotive and motorcycle engines derive their cooling from engine oil. Oil-cooled engine parts include the valve train, the crankcase, rods, pistons, and transmission parts in the case of motorcycles. Some engines have oil coolers. The Honda XR400R, BMW engines, and many other motorcycle engines have oil-to-air coolers. The XR650R and others with a dry sump lubrication system utilize the frame or an oil tank for additional oil cooling. If your motorcycle has a dry sump lubrication system and or an oil to air cooler, check the cooler for fin damage, dirt, or clogging. Make sure that the cooler is actually cooling the oil. This can be done with an infrared thermometer, checking the inlet and the outlet of the oil cooler to make sure there's a temperature drop. Like the coolant radiators, the cooler should dissipate heat. Moving down the road, of course, with ambient air flowing freely over the cooler, there should be a larger drop in oil temperature on each side of the cooler. Check for oil cooler hose restrictions, damage, or kinking. Anything that would restrict the flow of oil to the oil cooler. Excess oil heat can be the oil cooler, bad engine bearings, piston skirt clearance too close, distorted or expanded piston, rings dragging, cylinder wall scored or damaged, and any drag or excess resistance at the transmission gear set, transmission bearings, or the clutch assembly on a motorcycle with a unit design transmission engine. On unit construction motorcycle engines, the same oil lubricates the transmission, wet clutch, and the engine. An overheated transmission or clutch can heat up the engine oil and raise engine coolant temperatures. Overheated or restricted engine oil or poor oil flow can heat up the engine and transmission. Use the correct engine transmission oil. The oil must be formulated for a wet plate clutch to prevent plate drag or slippage. This is why I use Honda 4-stroke GN4 oil. There is one more item worth checking. The exhaust system. A plugged exhaust can actually cause engine overheating to the extent that the engine could boil over. Make sure there are no exhaust restrictions, including a plug spark arrestor or muffler. If all of these checks indicate that there is nothing mechanically wrong with the cooling system, yet the engine is running hotter than you would like, there are aftermarket solutions and upgrades. First though, rule out any causes for engine transmission, clutch, and cooling system overheating or excess friction. If more cooling is still necessary, and if the engine is only overheating in traffic and summer riding, one initial solution is to change to a lower temperature thermostat. 
This would enable the engine to run at a cooler operating temperature as you approach stops and stop and go traffic. That would give you a wider margin of cooling. Some of the options are a performance aftermarket radiator set that can increase radiator flow volume, coolant capacity, and gallons per hour or gallons per minute coolant flow rate to get more coolant exposed to the radiator tubes, fins, and cooling ambient air. On a bike not equipped with a fan or fans, aftermarket fans and shrouds can increase airflow through the radiator core or cores when the bike is stationary or moving slowly in traffic. The fan simulates ambient airflow. Fans are usually thermostatically controlled and the fan motor draw requires an adequate battery and stator capacity as noted in the comment exchange. On that note, most dirt bike stators have a low output at an idle and lower engine speed. This is not helpful in traffic. A battery would be important for fan operation at an idle or in stop and go traffic. If available, a high flow capacity water pump might be helpful. They're not often available for motorcycle engines and they do require a radiator volume that can handle the higher flow rate. The entire cooling system would have to be in top condition and suited for the additional flow rate. Overall, the goal is straightforward. There's a need to get coolant through the tubes in the radiator core so that the heat can dissipate from the core. More airflow will increase that dissipation of heat. Well, this sums up the cooling system needs in troubleshooting. Make sure your bike's cooling system functions at peak efficiency before considering an aftermarket fan or fans. Fans are most effective at low airflow speeds. Seldom is there a need for a fan once a bike is moving unrestricted. My rule of thumb is a 25 to 30 mile per hour road speed for adequate airflow through the radiator cores without fan support. Expect the engine to get warmer at low speeds. The water pump spins at a lower RPM and the coolant flow through the radiator core or cores decreases. Airflow decreases as well. A sufficient cooling system is a balancing act.